guys, Sam here, welcoming you back to the Bradford City Road to Glory career mode. Starting off things today with a game at home against Gillingham. If you're enjoying the Bradford career mode, of course, make sure you smash the like button down below. It's very much appreciated, of course, it helps the channel grow. And we start off very well here with Isgrove, you know, twisting and turning, can't get through on goal, unfortunately. But we kick off with a home game against Gillingham, and we're really, you know, at the end of the season now, we're at the top and we're showing our dominance in this league. Something that I didn't think we'd be doing this season, to be honest with you. I didn't think we'd be first, but we are, and um, we're trying to continue our winning ways. So hopefully we can continue doing that, and we get off with a really, really good start here against Gillingham at home. And one of the problems we've had at home is that we haven't performed that well. But today I thought that against Gillingham we played well. You know, it's not the best performances. I still feel like we struggle at home. You know, it might not come off in the videos, but it does feel a bit... Uh, it's like a certain amount of pressure that we're meant to win at home, and then it gets to me, and I, I just, sometimes I can't do it, but that's a really well-worked goal. Keeper should be doing better. Has to be said that the keeper should really be doing better there. But Gillingham, of course, weren't going to take that lying down. They had a couple chances towards the end of the first half, and the halftime whistle could not come any sooner for us. But we, start, we end off, sorry, the half with a really good chance. It could have fallen... Two, I believe not it was, and it could, he could have smashed it if he was a bit more alert, but unfortunately he didn't. And we finish off the half 1-0 up with 56% possession. Of course, last episode, if you watched it, uh, maybe you saw that um, we didn't get that much possession in our games. But right here, I was like, yes, we got a penalty, really well worked. It was a yellow card, fair enough. Um, you know, it wasn't really, I wasn't through on goal sort of thing, because I was turning away from goal. It's not really a, a goal scoring opportunity, but I was like, okay, we've got a penalty, we can extend our lead. Um, and I was pretty happy about it. I was like, Zogo can get another goal on his score sheet, because he's the top goal scorer right now. But they give us a free kick. So I went into the replay, instant replay, and I was like, no, 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 hold on. I have to show you, and I have to ask you guys what you think of the challenge. Now, I'm not 100% sure about the rules, but isn't it where you get tackled? I'm pretty sure it's where you get tackled. Even if it's where you are, I'm still within the box at all times. Unless you count the line outside the box, I really, really don't know. But you see where the contact is made, and in my eyes, that's where the pen that's where the decision should be made. Where the contact was made, and the contact was made inside the box by a lot. Nevertheless, we go sh uh, we we pass it off, which we don't rarely do, and Zoko just scores probably. The easiest goal he'll ever score. The defender is caught sleeping with the ball in his own penalty box. In his own six-yard box, which is criminal defending. And Zoko puts it away, and that's something that I haven't done. You guys have not seen me do that. I don't think once. I've never passed it off like that. Um, but I tried it this time, and it worked out. I don't know why I tried it, to be honest. I love taking shots from free kicks. But this time I was like, you know what? Not has a pretty decent long shot. He's got a bit of power behind his shot. And at the end of the game, we finished 2-0 thanks to that goal that Zoko picked up. And Pickford was our man of the match. He picked himself up a clean sheet, but he didn't really have to make that many saves. So I'm surprised that he got it. But unfortunately, we got the bad news that Zoko suffered a pulled calf and would be out for two weeks, meaning he would miss our game away to Port Vale. Now, Port Vale aren't doing that well in the league, so I, you know, I wasn't too stressful. But I have noticed when Zoko has not been, you know, able to play, he, he picked up an injury earlier in the season, if you guys remember, we struggled to score. That was the real main thing. When Zoko was out last time, we really did struggle to score. And he's not just a finisher, you know, he's a creator. And whenever he's playing, it feels so much easier to score. But Clark here, towards the end of the second half, fluffs up a chance that he probably should have taken. Uh, and he should, probably should have buried. He had a bit more time. And I think I rushed it at the end. I think I got pressured um, by the Port Vale defense. And we go in nil-nil after a very boring first half, as you can see in the match facts. Little tile there. It's one shot for each of us. None of us got him on target. Quite a boring first half, um, to be honest with you. And here they get a free kick from a decent position, actually. And we have not been the best off set pieces. And again, oh, we, can we concede. We concede, which actually has been quite a rare sight. I'm not going to lie. It's been quite a rare sight that we um, concede, but it's Alex Nimely. I'm not sure if he still plays for Manchester City or if he's made a permanent move to Port Vale, uh, but he was that Manchester City youngster, the striker. Uh, he's not the tallest, so it's quite, kind of upsetting that he was able to beat Davies to the header there. Davies should be doing a bit better, our skipper. And we go 1-0 down, and here we have a perfect chance. We're on the break. Hansen finds Clark, and that just shows what kind of team we put out there. Hansen and Clark as our front two, and Clark right at the end. Salvages a point, it looks like, in the 88th minute. 
in front of the away fans, and uh, I was really relieved. To be honest, at this point in the game, I thought we would lose, and I was taking the draw as a win here. Honestly, for me, it wasn't even two points dropped. It was one point gained. Any points we can get while Zoko's not playing, to me, is good points, because we really struggle to score without Zoko. His movement, the way he opens up his def the defenses, it's so unique and so different from all our uh, other strikers, and we end up picking up a point away, which I was not mad about at all. And the highest rated player was Clark, who finished it off, the goal off right at the end, would have boosted his rating 7.3 for Clark. Um, as you can see, Clark and Hansen finished off the game. Gallagher started the game, subbed him off for Hansen. And uh, it was a really, really weak strike force. And it, we really do rely on Zoko at this point. So I am considering signing him permanently because it showed how badly we need Zoko as he comes back for this game at home against Rochdale. Again, looking for a really good performance. Gallagher does really well there to win the ball. And he just finishes it. He just finishes it. I mean, that was incredible. That is probably one of my favorite goals I've scored with Gallagher. Probably not my favorite goal in the season because I've scored some pretty good goals with Zoko, some pretty long-range efforts with Knott. Uh, the likes of Knott and Reed and Kennedy have all scored long shots. But that, the, the, the placement of that finish, the top corner... Oh, that's just very, very... I mean, the way the net rippled from that shot was absolutely amazing. I was very happy with that goal. Again, here, Darby steals the ball. And if you notice, both our goals so far have come from us stealing the ball from the defender. And if you, even if you remember the first game, Zoko scored that, um, that goal from the set piece by taking it from the defender. Our high pressure is really paying off. And it's Darby this time who sends it into Zoko. He's... Header is misjudged, miscalculated. It falls straight to him and he takes a shot and he buries it and makes it 2-0 for us. Here, beautiful long ball from Isgrove. With looking at the defenders, look at them. They just they just pretty much I don't know what they do. They're like hugging each other. They're trying to make you know, they're trying to like not fall, so they're like using each other as balance beams or something. And I mean <laughs> Gallagher just runs behind them and finishes. That's probably one of the easiest finishes Gallagher's gonna have. Zoko just leaves it. He's like, I'm gonna let Gallagher have I'm gonna let Sam have this one. And Gallagher just absolutely puts it away. I mean, there's nothing the keeper can do. He's relying on his defense, who have just absolutely failed him. Um, and there's nothing he can do about Gallagher's shot. And we go into the half 3-0. What a contrast that is. 0-0 in the other game. 3-0 at this game, at the, half, uh, at the half time point. What a contrast. And I'm not even lying. It has to do with Zoko. Right here, Pickford... He's in no man's land, and I'm not even going to lie, I'm not going to blame him on Pickford, I told him to come out, but if you notice his little hesitation, you'll see it in the replay here, look at this hesitation there, and he just, ah, if he didn't hesitate, he would have got into it, and I'm not sure why he hesitated, I did hold, uh, I, I did hold Y, or is it X, I, I think it's Y, I'm still new to the Xbox control, I still don't know it off by heart. Because uh, I have been a PlayStation kid, my, you know, for PS3 I've had it, and now Xbox One. I believe it's Y, the top button, you know, to pull your keeper out. I pulled it, and he hesitated. I don't know why he did. But nevertheless, we could pick up all three points, and Zoko puts the final nail in the coffin, as if it wasn't already confirmed at 3-1. And we end the game 4-1. And that is, for me, that is the contrast that Zoko... That, that's what Zoko brings to the table. That is exactly what Zoko brings to the table. 1-1 against Port Vale. 4-1 against Rochdale. That's the difference. That is what Zoko can do for us. And guys, at this point in time, I think I'm going to sign Zoko permanently. Considering, I mean, depends on his price, okay? Depends on his price. If he's over a million, 1.5 million, I don't think I'm going to sign him. But if we can pick him up cheap, I think I'm going to sign this guy because I don't care how old he is. If you're putting in work for me, if you're, if you're doing well... I can't deny that. And he picks himself up another vote for the man, uh, for the MVP awards, a man of the match um, for this game with an 8.4 rating. And uh, Zoko is one hell of a player, guys. But that brings us to the end of this episode. That is the table. 24 wins, 10 draws, 6 losses. Preston are still hot on our tail, 4 points behind. But there's a massive, massive 20-point gap between us and Crawley Town. And there's 46 games in the league which means with six games left, the most Crawley Town can get is 80 points. So we've pretty much, well, we have. We've mathematically confirmed that we have automatic promotion, which is absolutely great. Now we're just going for that top of the tree. Hopefully we can come first. It's us and Preston racing for it. But that ends today's episode, guys. And that is the man of the match slash MVP votes uh, for the MVP award. I guess they're called man of the match votes for MVP awards. But yeah, I'm going to stop babbling on now. As you can see, that's the leaderboard. I'll see you guys in the next one. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave a like. If you're new around here, check out some of the other content and subscribe. As I said before, I'll see you guys in the next one. Keep it real.